Hello guys, welcome to Zero to Hero. What a flash crash for the old coin market. I had a pullback on the chart. So in this video, I will show you all my relevant levels. We are going to go through data, charts, metrics, indicators, news, and much, much more as the Bitcoin dominance, the old coin season index, the total tree, liquidation leverage, and much more. So stay tuned and let's dig deep into the rabbit hole. Okie dokie guys, as always, check my community on open chat. Link is down in the description below and join the revolution that is currently going on 100% fully on chain. Now, let me show you my official request to CoinGecko to release ICP in the AI category. So I did post an article. First of all, I did mention here that uh, obviously, ICP was listed on CoinGecko, which is absolutely visible from this screenshot. Then after that, CoinGecko did remove ICP without any explanation, without any announcement, without showing and uh, explaining why they did so, why they think ICP is not an AI project. What happened afterwards? Well, what I tried to prove here is a point. Uh, ICP is the only blockchain that can run AI 100% on chain with many other projects like Decide AI, for example, that run a GPT-2 model successfully on chain and much, much more. So I do post a ton of articles here that talk about ICP being an AI project. Yahoo.com, for example, put ICP in the top five AI driven tokens and so on and so forth. So I use uh, many articles here just to prove a point, uh, videos and demos from Dominic Williams also to prove a point and reasons why AI on ICP is possible and will be possible also with caffeine AI in the future, even bigger narrative. Also putting my video here, if you didn't see it already, go check it out. So this is an official request to CoinGecko. So if you want this to have some traction, go smash the like button on X and uh, repost it so many people can see. Let's, uh, as we did so far, bombard CoinGecko on every post they post on social media, asking asking them to release uh, ICP. This is what we did with CoinMarketCap and it worked. Now, let's move on to something else. Uh, this very interesting partnership of ICP. So new partnership between the Definity Foundation and EAT Zurich AI Center will benefit both ecosystems. So what is this all about? One of the foremost universities in Switzerland, it Zurich, this membership uh, will give our R&D and business team direct access to the latest research, faculty within the university, technical talent, networking, as well as growing ecosystem of startups with experience in AI and deep tech. This is in absolutely in line with what I have been mentioning here for months. So people constantly complain about the strategy of the Definity Foundation related to their marketing. I will explain you their strategy one more time. First point, you hire and try to attract as many developers as possible. This is really needed and required to build a world computer. Why? Other projects are not going through this route simply because they're not building a world computer. They're simply building an AI token. The only thing that is on chain is the AI token. The infrastructure, the data storage, everything else is not on chain, is on Amazon Web Services, is on Arweave, Filecoin and somewhere else. So difference, big difference in vision, first of all. So this is the first step. You attract as many developers as possible because you need to build. Second phase, you build, 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 build and develop. So this is the second phase in which you are trying to build a product that is usable, that is working. For example, Caffeine AI, which is going to be a game changer in my opinion. We shall see the demo next year. I have a long-term vision for this project. I don't expect to be released anytime soon. Give them time. And when they have a full product that is usable, then you market your product. Then you heavily need to market your product to the masses. They already uh, have been talking with many big players 
in the AI space in Web2, which is absolutely fine. So their strategy, I have nothing against their strategy. First, I want to see a usable product that can be used by the world. So the third point here is change the world. Have something that is going to be a game changer. Then you heavily market it. For now, we don't have this. We don't have this one killer app or dap we don't have this one killer product that will attract millions if not billions of users we don't have it yet we need to work heavily on that we need to develop it it needs to be usable it needs to be great it needs to be much better than what others do have on the open market actually it has to be something that nobody has on the open market which is something we are working on and then you simply put a lot of uh, resources in the marketing of that great product. However, the preparation for that is very long. You need to attract a ton of developers. You need to work a lot, thousands of years of R&D and so on and so forth. So uh, interesting here, uh, how we can leverage both our ecosystem to the max and bring them forward in the AI and Web3 space together. So this is the point here, uh, very good to see once again in line with expectations and in line with what I have been mentioning here for months. Now, let me focus on uh, demand for computation on ICP. Obviously the demand of com for computation increased. So. Many of you asked, hey, but why we are not burning as much ICP anymore if the cycle burn rate is elevated? And uh, the Definity Foundation did provide an answer to that, which absolutely makes sense here. So um, if the cycle burn rate is elevated, this does not mean that we will automatically burn a lot more ICP. Why is that so? Because you are converting ICP to cycles. However, you don't have to use the cycle straight away. So for example, let me uh, make an example based on my experience. So for example, let's say that I did convert some ICP to cycles three months ago. At this point, I have used my ICP, it was burned, and it will be added to this amount. However, I did not use the cycles straight away, I did use them after three months. So after three months, the cycle burn rate will then also increase as a result. At least this is how the Definity Foundation did explain this, and this is why they mentioned, hey, there might be uh, a slight uh, misalignment with the cycle burn rate and the total burn, which makes absolute uh, sense to me. Okay, now for the rest, uh, let's check here all this relevant metrics. Total canister state uh, did heavily increase. I got a comment on X that uh, this was done by viral. Um, they're obviously storing a lot of data on chain as a result, which is absolutely great to see. We need uh, many more projects as well that will store data on chain because it's cheap and because it's secure. So uh, very good to see other blockchains simply cannot even uh, store a picture while we have stored 7.42 tebibytes of memory on chain. Very good to see. Now let's focus very quickly on the macro. Fear and greed index for Bitcoin. Bitcoin is still doing well, no problem. This is why I did mention risk management, 50% of my portfolio in Bitcoin. Bitcoin is king in a transitional phase of the market. Everyone thought this is not the transitional phase of the market. What I have mentioned yesterday, this is still the transitional phase of the market. We are towards the end of this phase, but we are still in Bitcoin season, okay? So uh, yesterday I also did show you this. So uh, the performance, is weaker compared to last time around. However, we are still in extreme greed for a prolonged period of time. What about the old coin season index? Absolutely wrecked. Move to the downside, drop to the downside. Is this the end? Was this the old coin season? Is this all what we are going to see in this cycle? Once again, I don't think so. And I will show you why in a second. So Bitcoin dominance, what I did mention guys, if there will be a lower high here, another bounce. How many times I did mention attention last time around in this same period, same exact period. It's scary. 
how the four year cycle is precise here for the Bitcoin dominance, that we had this bounce to the upside. Same thing happened, guys. Move to the upside. So move to the upside here, then move to the downside. Heavy, heavy, aggressive move to the downside. Look at this. Let's measure this move here. So this was a 10% drop. Let's see in this cycle what this was. This was a 10% move, exact same move, guys, exact same move. Then we went on a rampage one more time and created an all time high for this move in, in the previous cycle, not overall, uh, an all time high for the Bitcoin dominance. Do I expect this? It's possible, it's likely, I did mention this. However, what is more likely, in my personal opinion, is a lower high and then continuation to the downside. However, I cannot disregard the higher high is still possible. So Bitcoin dominance back to 57%. I was mentioning it for months, guys. For months, I have mentioned, uh, I have been mentioning, this is the most important chart that we should look at. Did we get really confirmation? Not really. We still back in this trend line. So overall, this was a fake out. I need to see, of course, closures, multiple daily, also weekly closures here, because this, this is a multi-year trend to the upside. This, these are two and a half years of trend to the upside. You cannot expect to have a daily closure and then uh, feel like you're the winner. No, you need confirmation. We didn't have it. Um, this was a fake out, perfectly fine, and we continue in the next direction. Even though, even if we drop now directly to the downside, this was still a lower high, this is still perfectly fine, and this is, as I mentioned, the opportunity that I was waiting for to convert some Bitcoin to altcoins. If you really believe there is an altcoin season, this is absolutely, guys, no financial advice. I don't want you to listen to any of what I say in order to what I'm trading because I'm trading based on my risk profile, not based on your risk profile. So you should do your own research and you should figure out what is best based on your risk profile. Now, very quickly, what I'm going to show you related to uh, the Bitcoin pair. Now we are going to compare the projects that are priced similarly to ICP to see what is happening in terms of structure. So move to the upside, break down no man's land. I did. I was mentioning for, for weeks, guys, we are still in no man's land. ICP is still not doing anything against, against the Bitcoin peer. You break down once again. What are other doings? other projects that are priced similarly? So one more project that is priced similarly is AVEX, of course. Same structure, move to the upside, even same timing of the moves, break to the downside completely, then you move to the upside and then you break down. So the structure fairly, fairly similar. What is near doing? Near, as I mentioned, is doing a little bit better because it had a peak in May, not in January of uh, 2024. So the time capitulation was much shorter because of that. Near didn't have so much time to drop as ICP or AVEX did. However, still structure is similar. You drop down, you bounce, and now you're dropping down again like a rock. So shall see if this trend line can hold. I'm not expecting it to hold by any means. Uh, these are these are pairs. So the volume, the trading volume here for these pairs is not that high, okay? And this is why it's not so reliable as the USDT pair when I'm checking the TA. Here, what I'm tracking mostly are trends, okay? Not so much level, FIBs, I'm not even showing you Fibonacci here because it's pointless. It's not heavily, an, a heavily traded asset. There is not so much trading volume for this pair. That's the point. Now, let's move on uh, to another project that has a fairly similar structure to NEAR protocol. So you don't have a peak in January, you have a peak in May, however, you drop like a rock. Even, even worse, much worse than NEAR. Arweave, but Arweave has been priced similarly to ICP. He's following more or less what NEAR, AVEX and ICP are doing. Those four projects are priced similarly in the cycle, even though they shouldn't be in my personal opinion, because ICP is a different beast compared to them. Arweave, on the other hand, is doing something else. NEAR and AVEX, something else. So 
shouldn't be like that, but the market tends to do that. Okay, so one more time drop, then move to the upside and now drop once again here. So everything in line with all these other projects. Now, let's not cherry pick or rather let's cherry pick. Uh, let's show you one that is not moving and is not priced like uh, AVAX, near Rwave, ICP. And this is Solana. Solana, uh, I did mention in this cycle, overall, based on the market cap and based on the performance uh, against Bitcoin, is the best performing altcoin. Okay, don't cherry pick me some altcoin with a market cap of $1 billion because it's not the same pair of shoes. Uh, Solana is a high cap in the in the altcoin market, in the total tree and in the crypto space, and it has been performing the best against Bitcoin. This is a matter of fact, okay, based on this chart, based on the performance. What is Solana doing? Still holding this bullish scenario, which all these other projects are not holding. However, it is approaching to a make it or break it moment here. It has still some space to go down. It broke this trend line, as I mentioned once again. I'm not even expecting it to be respected. Uh, this does not have as much uh, trading volume as the USDT pair. However, uh, Solana also heavily dropped. Nothing that we wouldn't expect now after Bitcoin is still holding. Now, total trade. If you think ICP is a disaster, look at this. Look at this move here. So this is a drop of almost 20%, 19.5% drop for the total tree. So uh, once again, what I did mention that the total tree, if it's really bullish, needs to go at least a 2x after this peak. So currently we need to shake out a ton of leverage. Look, this is a lot of leverage from time to time. It needs to be shaking out. So now we need to see if we come down lower, retest this once again and try. However, we also should focus on the seasonality of the market. So what happened last time around? So last time around, what I did mention, peak of the Bitcoin dominance in January of the post halving year. However, very important to note, this is crucial to note, every cycle is different. So in the last cycle, what happened? We had COVID first of all. So we had two huge rate cuts that influenced heavily the monetary policy. When you have such big rate cuts, okay, huge rate cuts, then there is an effect immediately on the economy, immediately, because you cut. So what we are going to cut now in six months, you cut it in one month, okay? It's different, it's a different effect. Then we experienced loose monetary policy, of course, a lot of leverage because margin rates drop heavily. This time around, the effect takes longer time to play out because we have smaller rate cuts, okay? However, the effect is still going to show, however, later on in the cycle, we do still have a pro crypto environment. We still have an 85% chance last time uh, when I checked that uh, the Fed is going to cut rates on the 18th of December, 85% chance. This will be another rate cut this year. So we had 50 basis points, we had 25 basis points, and we are probably going to get 25 basis points. This is already 100 basis points in three uh, FOMC meetings. The trend should continue next year, even though it's questionable. However, I did still expect two more rate cuts of 25 basis points. What happens after that? After that, it usually takes six to 12 months for the economy to factor in this uh, rate cuts. After that, usually we can expect to see loose monetary policy, lower margin rates, consumers spending more money, investing more, businesses also investing and spending more and so on and so forth. This is the effect in the long term. It is diluted. It's not like in the last cycle that you have an immediate effect because of COVID. This time around, we don't have the black swan. At least I hope so. So uh, now uh, what I'm expecting to see is something that is going to happen later. So for example, as I mentioned, in March of 2025, end of for the first quarter, or even maybe a little bit later, it's still possible, okay? 
Now, uh, let me show you very quickly the ecosystem for ICP, absolute capitulation across the board, not only ICP, as you have seen, uh, the total tree is down 20% from the top, uh, so absolutely in line with the rest of the altcoin market. Here, bubbles, <laughs> red, 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 90% red across the board. And even if it's green, it's like 0.5% at best. So overall, a complete, uh, complete catastrophe here for the ICP ecosystem as also for the altcoin market due to leverage. Of course, this is a deleveraging de event, which we are going to see now in a second. So liquidation heat map, three months. So you can see here this level then dropped. Uh, and of course, now all these longs were obviously liquidated very brutally, I must say. And now we shall see uh, the levels that really matter. Let me show you, first of all, the psychology, as I mentioned, out of the zone and every drop, we have disbelief and uncertainty. Now, I, I, I think that we went all the way back to a lot of uh, disbelief. Now, uh, very interesting to see what I uh, told you yesterday. I have five waves on this chart. What does this mean? Well, this usually means that the move is complete. So I can expect a pullback. So did we get a pullback? Absolutely. Yes, we did. So what are the most relevant levels here? So the first relevant level is the 382. So the 382 is a level that usually you would expect in the stock market here, even though this is a little bit different because this is a wave tree. So usually more explosive and usually the retracement can be more shallow, but they don't have to be. They still can be brutal, especially for low cap altcoins. And by the way, five, six billion dollars for me is still low cap uh, compared to the giants that I'm tracking in the stock market. So overall um, here, if we track uh, what happened here, uh, we stopped more or less on the 50% retracement. We wicked a little bit. Of course, this happened. This happens every time. This happened in this major trend, uh, the 786 level, for example, that was the last line of defense for the bulls around uh, $6.8. We wicked all the way to $5.5. It was just a wick, just to grab some liquidity. Okay, this is how the market works. We have, look at this, moved to the upside, created a candle here. So perfectly fine. The 50% retracement should be a very relevant level. And we bounced, okay? Now, this is can be still a continuation of a downtrend. If this level hold, so these are the levels for you. Uh, the, the, the best level, the best case scenario now would be, of course, that this is it. This was the 50% retracement. It was reached. And now we can move to the other direction after deleveraging. Or there is also another option that we are going to break a little bit more down. And then we are going to focus on this other retracement levels, uh, the 618, the 786, and so on and so forth. If we drop all the way down to the 618 and the 786, I will be looking to accumulate much more. And this is how I do. I always take in consideration the worst case scenario and I accumulate toward these levels because of the risk to reward ratio. This is how I trade. This is how I invest. I'm not trading for the short term. I'm not a speculative investor. I'm just looking for opportunities. As I mentioned, markets are always full of opportunities. We just need to spot them. There is also an invalidation point. This is why risk management is so important. So if we drop under this level, then we can assume something more bearish is going on. This whole pattern then most likely fails. It doesn't play out. However, it, uh, until Fibonacci retracement levels hold, okay, until they're not all broken, this is still valid. And this would be in line with what I'm expecting. So a one, a two. So let's put this on the chart. So this is my now micro microwave one. Okay, and I have five waves and then I have a micro wave two to the downside. I need to now respect Fibonacci retracement levels. And after that, I would have a micro wave three. Uh, if we want to check what the target is, for example, let's completely suppose that this was the bottom. Okay, uh, here around uh, around here where this candle ended. 
this was a relevant Fibonacci retracement level, the 50%. So Fib trend extension here or here, not, not a big difference really. And let's see. So the 1.618 is still at $25. If this, of course, holds, this needs to hold. Once again, I will repeat, I repeat 10 times because people will tell, hey, but how can you now calculate targets to the upside? It's bearish, it's bearish. It's not bearish. This is just a correction of this move if Fibonacci retracement levels hold. And then we can move to the third wave and complete uh, this setup on the macro scale as well. A uh, very important point here is if we want to be bullish, ICP needs to break $21. This is the line in the sand to something more bullish for ICP on larger time frames. So we now need to reconsolidate. Of course, uh, speculators took some profits. Uh, now all the bulls that were sitting on the sidelines as me can track potential opportunities, maybe reload and move higher. Of course, the macro will also play a huge role. Of course, it's not guaranteed and so on and so forth. Okie dokie, guys. Uh, thank you very much for your attention. I hope you did enjoy uh, this uh, video. I'm fairly sure that many investors will start to panic again. All these negative emotions come back. There are no emotions, guys. I will repeat this. Zero emotions in financial markets. It's all about data, charts, metrics, and indicators. What I'm trying to do here is help you completely remove emotions so we can focus on data and we can try to check what is the most likely scenario and what is the best opportunity in the market and how we can profit out of these opportunities every time or at least in 70, 80% of the cases, this is what a trading is all about. You will never be right 100%. As I'm also, I also did some uh, predictions that didn't come, uh, didn't become reality. However, most of them did. And this is the point here. Try to be as precise as possible, removing emotions. And in the end, it plays out in most of the cases and you can profit. Even if you are profitable 60-70% of the times, you will still be very, very profitable in this game. This is how I've been navigating crypto um, previous cycles and this is how I will continue to navigate it because it simply worked for me based on my risk profile. Okie dokie guys, thank you one more time. Smash the like button, subscribe to the channel and I will see you in the next one. Bye bye.